Steve McCudaniel, Kale Artist Sports. We're here with the great David Benavidez. Uh, man, it's hot in this gym, bro. It's hot in this gym. The heater's on. You guys close the doors. I, I'm losing weight. Uh, you look in great shape. Yeah, no, it's okay. Uh, yeah. Um, Thank you guys. Thank you guys for having me, man. Uh, I appreciate it. Tell me, um, you're in beautiful San Diego. It's a beautiful house. Is this kind of the best training uh, setup you've probably had uh, up to this point? Or to there? be honest, bro, it looks nice, but this neighborhood is dangerous, bro. Oh. No, I'm fucking <laughs> nah, nah, man. Everything has been good, bro. Honestly, this is my first time in San Diego too, so it's it's an, it's an amazing city. You know, I've never been here, and I didn't expect it to be like this. So it's beautiful. I mean, they lent us this beautiful house to train in. The guys from Five Star um, uh, uh, TV. So. I'm just very grateful too, you know, I mean, it's hard having a uh, hard training camp, but once you have a house like this, it, this it makes it a hundred times more easier. So I'm very grateful, man, and I'm, I'm just having a good time. Yeah, I mean, you could tell you guys are all, uh, the, the camp is in, in full swing and, and everyone's happy. Uh, before we get into the fighting stuff, man, uh, how's, how's the crypto going? The Dogecoin, I know you were, you were pretty, oh no! That shit's, that shit's fucked, bro. Everything is, is it's horrible. Even Bitcoin's down, Ethereum's down, Dogecoin down, Shiba's down. Polygon is down, so I mean, uh, I haven't, I haven't checked You're it. Not paying attention. I haven't looked at it. Next subject. <laughs> uh, looks like you're fighting Lemieux, uh, April, May. Uh, we're still waiting on a date. Um, I feel like, man, you're 25. Lemieux was fighting Triple G, I want to say, five, six years ago. Is this, is this kind of one of those fights like the idols become your rivals kind of, kind of a thing? Like guys you looked up to, watch on TV now, it's like it's, it's time to get in the ring and, and, and test yourself against these guys. Yeah, basically. I mean, I wouldn't say he's my idol, but he was, a, he was a, one of the fighters I did like. Um, yeah, but I mean, he's barely 31. He's not even that old, you know, but he's, he's a definitely veteran, bro. He's been in there for a long, long time. And that just makes me feel like myself, when I used to watch this guy, you know, I'd be like, damn, he's a, he's a monster. And now I'm, I'm going to fight him. It makes me realize I'm going in the right direction and I'm doing everything right. So, I mean, it's in, for a WBC interim title. Um, you know, I love to be, bring these great fights, especially back to Phoenix, Arizona. It's going to be a great fight. You know, it's going to be a war. He's not going to go in there. You know, he's not going to go down easy. You know, so I'm not expecting it to be easy, but I'm working extremely hard. I've already been here in camp for like three weeks. There's three, still three months left, right. you know, so I'm, I'm giving myself the best opportunity to look as best as I can, and it's going to be a great fight. Yeah, man, I, I can't wait. I know, Phoenix, uh, you had a great homecoming last time. I'm sure that, that's going to be awesome. You guys had the, the wall painted for you, too, right at the gym? Yeah, uh, yeah they gave me a, a November 13th. They made that my day. And oh, Phoenix, there's awesome. the mayor, gave me a whole uh, declaration of everything, too. So it was, it, was great. it was good, man. Phoenix shows me a lot of love. and. I show Phoenix a lot of love too, and this is my city, and I'm always gonna represent Phoenix until the day I retire. Yeah, man, that's that's cool to see you going uh, going back to hometown. Um, Want to get into boxing? Obviously, uh, you had a lot of respect for Canelo. I've, I've seen a recent interview you talking about just the guys he fought coming up, things like that. Uh, Floyd said recently that he thinks Canelo's ducking you. I'm sure you saw that. What what did you think about that? I mean, I just feel like this, this fight is getting so much attention now. You know, it's, it's not even nowhere close to being made, but a lot of people want to see it. When you see Floyd talking about it, you see Mike Tyson talking about it. You see uh, who Antonio Tarver. There's so much fighters, oh, Abel Sanchez, so much fighters, so much trainers. People I know about boxing are excited for this fight for a reason. So that just makes me even more motivated, you know, especially having like somebody like Floyd in my corner. You know, I have some Floyd that everybody looks up to, so I, that just makes me really happy too. And... Like I said, I'm going the right direction. All these things that's happening and everything that's been talked about makes me feel like I'm definitely in the right spot I need to be in. Now it's just time to step it up and work, work even harder. Right, I, you're definitely going in, on, on the right road. Uh, recently, you know, the rumor came out that uh, Canelo was given either Charlo uh, from Al Heyman, PBC, or, you know, Bival and, and Triple G. As a, as a fight fan, would you like it, which road would you rather him pick, just you know, a pure boxing fan? Just to, to be honest, if not, at, so well, let me tell you exactly what's going to happen. I mean, I, what I think is going to happen, that's smarter. I mean, he fought against Caleb Plant for pay-per-view. Will he sell like 800000 yeah. Okay, they, it's, it's either another pay-per-view fight against another great fighter or a two-deal fight with two tough fighters with no pay-per-view. What, what, the smart business, what do you think right. is going to happen, you know? But I mean, I feel like that's a great fight too, Charlo versus Canelo. I would want to see uh, Charlo versus Canelo, and it just gives me a better chance because that's 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 my weight class and that's my lane right there. So I'd rather see that fight. I I know you. I've seen you say in interviews and and just talking to you. You've always said that you've reached out for these fights, for the Charlo fight, for the Caleb fight. Um, 
you know, in, in this day and age, normally big fights don't happen because of like politics and, and like different promoters and stuff like that. Do you, how is it that you kind of, I feel like you're very calm. You're very kind of cool and collected about like those fights not happening, even though you want them and they should be easy to make. How, how do you kind of like digest that yourself mentally of like, well, they just didn't want it, I guess. There's not really much you could do and you can't get frustrated, you know, and that's, that's where, you know, that's where probably if you get frustrated and you start talking shit to like the promoters, that's where people fall out at. You know, you see Teofimo Lopez made a big fucking deal. He left Bob Arum and now he's back with Bob Arum, you know? You know, so you have to you have to stay calm, you have to stay patient. If these fighters these fights are not happening, it's probably business wise, how they're looking at it, it's probably gonna be a bigger fight in the future. So I mean I I I've, for me, what I like to know about myself is I did the most I could to try to get these fights. If it do, if they don't happen, then it's out of my control. There's nothing I could do. Right. Yeah. Speaking of the Canelo's last fight with Caleb what were your thoughts on it? You know, Caleb started talking to Canelo, uh, you know, in the middle of the fight. Uh, forgiveness? Right. <laughs> is that, is that, like that? That's how I seen it, bro. Like, honestly, I felt like uh, Caleb was always, always saying, oh, I'm pretty good, huh? I'm pretty, like, I mean, you don't do that, bro. You have to have, you have to be 100% focused on the fight. And it probably felt like, oh, he probably maybe thought he was going to let him slide and not knock him out. Mm -hmm. I don't know what was going on, but I don't, I don't, I didn't like that at all. But he got his ass clapped, <laughs> you know, he got knocked out, so. I don't know. I mean, it was kind of funny to see that. Do you do you f still see the Caleb fight as something lucrative for yourself, being yeah. that it ended that way? And you know, I mean, he's still a, a top fighter. Yeah, he's still a top fighter. He's a he's a former world champion. You know, of course, it's a lucrative fight because I was supposed to fight Uskatek. He was a former world champion, and I thought that was a good fight for my resume too. So why wouldn't it be with Caleb Plant? I mean, that's still a fight. I mean, I, I'm sure you're still gonna be there. It's still a fight I want. You know, he talks shit. He has a big mouth, so. You know, he's gonna, probably going to get heated up soon again, so we'll see what happens. Hopefully, man, because I, I feel like that was a fight that definitely could have been made and probably should have been, and, and you know, never, we never saw the light of day. Uh, Canelo, obviously there's the Charlo Bivol thing, but there was also that him moving up to 190. Is that something you want to see? Obviously, legacy-wise, I want to say he'd be the f one of the first uh, Mexicans, I want to say, to, to win five titles in five divisions. Is, is that... Like historically something you want to see or you feel like that's kind of maybe, I don't know, I, I, how do you see that? I mean, whatever he does, bro, I mean, he's, he's doing things, he's, um, he's making history. So, I mean, whatever lane he wants to go to, I mean, it's all completely up to him. I feel like he's earned the right to do whatever he wants to do. So he could do whatever he wants to do. <laughs> he, he talks about, uh, there was a point there when your name kind of became the, the, you know, was rising to the top, right, of, of he's going to have to see you. And, uh, and they started, I started hearing Eddie Reynoso talk about, you know, he doesn't want to fight another Mexican fighter. But you're half Ecuadorian. Yeah. Do, do you need to play that up a little bit more, maybe? Put, put that on the drugs more or something like that? I mean, but some people you could see, I mean, so, so there would be some Mexican people that say I'm not even Mexican because, you know, the Mexican-Americans, you know, they always play that. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, honestly, I don't even know what to say about that. But I feel like um, I'm not going nowhere, bro. I'm going to be here for a long, long time. You know, I feel like I still got another 10 years. I mean, you see even with Canelo, too, when he was coming up, when he was 24, 25, I mean, he didn't get a lot of the big fights he wanted to. You know, he didn't start making those until he was like 27, 28. So I mean, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for whatever, bro. I'm ready for whatever. So, but I mean, as people can see like that, the careers don't move that fast like that, bro. So, I mean, people saying, talking all this shit, saying I ain't fighting nobody, this and that. If you see a lot of those people like that, like Canelo, like he was fighting, like, I mean, he wasn't fighting like the top, top opposition that when he was 25, he was fighting some good fights, but I mean, it felt like it was kind of like me. So, I mean, he did fight Floyd, but he lost, but, um, I don't know, bro. It is what it is. Yeah, you're right on time. Yeah. I, I feel like. But speaking of that, too, let me tell you too. Like, I've been here. I've been champion two times. Two times. I'm barely 25. Like, you seen Crawford? He's one of the best fighters right now. But when did he really get put on? Mm -hmm. Like, 27? Yeah. 26? Right. When he fought Gumbo? How old was he? Uh, probably about 25. I yeah, to around there. So I mean, this 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 yeah. shit takes a long time, bro. It, it doesn't really happen overnight, True. you know. So. But that's what I'm saying. I already have so much experience now. I'm, just, I'm about to be 10 years professional. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm barely 25. So, I mean, I'm moving in the right decision. And my mind, is put, my mind is on straight and everything is going good. And like I said, I see a lot of opportunities. Now I just got to stay focused. I got that probably the, at the time of my life, I have to be, this is the most disciplined and most focused I have to be. So whatever comes next, I'm, I'm going to be ready for it.